So anyway, I got up and I was drunk and I tried to sing in that bar and it was one where it was up instead of like right in front. It was, I don't know what well, I thought was the spell that part too, but and I kind of humiliated myself and I could have done a lot better, you know. But here, this is one of those where they have regulars. I've already noticed I've gone twice. Some people, they have regulars. I recognize them from a few, a few months ago when I went before the winter. I hit us hard here. Um, some of the regulars that get up there are horrible. Um, and yeah, if, if you know people that get up there, having the guts to get up there, even though they're horrible. Um, and I guess I know from American Idol shows that People don't know they're horrible, you know. But it's supposed to be just for fun, and people get up there that sound horrible, and, uh, like really bad, and they keep getting up there. So why shouldn't I try? I think I will next time I go. Maybe I'll go. The, maybe I'll go. No matter what, I always have to take a taxi home. But you know, but if I can save money just by being in the area earlier, you know what I mean? Why not do it? I don't know. But not when I'm carrying stuff. I want to have a purse. started the new thing where it should be 40. Remember, these doctors just, they're going to push whatever they think. You know? It's like if they come up with brand new vaccines or Ebola or for this or whatever vaccine of the hour, the doctors are going to push it because that's what they're trained to do. He's not against that, you know, he's making a point, which is a valid point, it's conscious thinking, but, you know, people are so against that religious freedom thing in Indiana, blah, 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 blah and I am too, because it can allow you to discriminate against, like, gays and lesbians, but then he's saying, you know, but everyone's allowed to discriminate against people who are anti-vaccine, you know, so it's not, so it, it should be across the board. <laughs> we shouldn't be allowed to discriminate against any minority group or whatnot, you know. You're looked at like a fucking criminal if you're against vaccines. It'll probably happen in my lifetime. We will be forced to get whatever vaccine of the hour that the government deems necessary for 
as we human safety, you know. Where did Ebola go? Uh -huh. It's supposed to be such a huge... People are panicked and whatnot. Now we're not even hearing about it. I guess that happened with the swine flu, too. People were all panicked about the swine flu and then it amounted to nothing. And then, you know, when I want to know what I found out about the swine flu. They lied. They said they, they weren't finding any cases. They pretended there was tons and tons and tons of cases. And a regular old doctor found this out, not some conspiracy theorist quack, you know. Regular doctor in Dr. Something or other, but she was silenced. No. No. Let's see where this world's headed. I went back to the same place because it's easier and then I wasn't able to see anyone I have to wait, you know. Maybe I'd rather just go somewhere else. And a nice phone call with Selena. She understands, you know, what a lot of people don't. Where does love come into play? Why am I automatically taking advantage of my mom if I don't give her money for rent that she, you know, money she doesn't want, neither wants nor needs? But Selena understands this is how this society is. And my mom, if I leave, my mom does not, she, no one can force her to have a stranger here. My mom was pissed when I did, when I did, when I did was thinking I was going to have to leave, I want to remember. I was supposed to have to leave, my mom and I don't get along, you know, and everyone's eyes, and, and with the, being accused of elder abuse against my mom, blah, 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 you know. So I still might have to leave. But my mom said, I don't even if you leave, I'm not, I don't want, you know, some stranger moving. Because you know, all I did was think, oh, she, you know, Samantha can make, like, $500 a month. And, you know, can make more in rent than she actually pays. Not with everything combined, of course, but, you know. I went out last night. I might get up there and see. Even if I fuck up. Which I haven't done in so long. Even if I fuck up, you know. I'll sing a song that I know. A simple song. People get up there and sing really complicated songs and they fuck up badly, but, you know, they do it. They know the, they watch and the words and they probably know the song, but they don't sound very good. Who cares? It's good to do it, just to have the courage to do it. I admire, I actually really, I clap for everyone I talk up for everyone. I always clap for everyone. So I was so hurt and sad. I sat up front at this little place in Hollywood and went, I don't remember the name, it was one of those little coffee shop places. And I sat up front and, and every single person that went up there, and you know, there were, it was a comedy, you could do comedy or poetry, and I clapped for everyone, everyone, clapped for all the comedians, clap, 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 clap for everyone, and everyone's poetry, clap, clap, clap. I 
got up there and say and recited love is nothing and no one clapped but the person who went up right before me the whole room clapped and you always think of these poetry coffee shop places are supposed to be supportive and you should just clap the whole room should clap for everyone no one clapped that was very disappointing very Going on another night. First time I went. Did I? No, I think I'd gone and didn't do any. You know, I think this was I finally got the courage to get up there. And no cloud. Maybe I did a poem on a different night with a different crowd. Yeah, it used to be in this little coffee shop in Hollywood. You could one night was the first time, one night was poetry and comedy. That's what it was, poetry and comedy. And I forget what poem I did, but it was a different poem. But the night I did poetry and comedy, the comedians clapped for me. I think one might have even said that was really good or something. I don't know what poem I did, but I'm sure I've written down in my journal. I'm sure I did it. Wrote a set of... I don't know, but... And then I went a different night. And that particular night, it was the same night, but then they'd switched it, and it was now... Or maybe it was a different night, but it was poetry and people who sang or recited poetry or sang. Okay? So it wasn't the comedians, and it was those people, those people, who were closer to poetry than 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 comedians. They didn't clap. And love is nothing is actually not a bad poem. Joe is a very Joe's Joe's very critical. When I say critical, he is. He's critical of like music and this that he thinks most of the music nowadays sucks and you know he was a huge critic of Nickelback he thought they were just the whatever he called them when I came in you know I don't know but he's a huge critic of Nickelback and then I later go and think that he's saying Nickelback but I like Nickelback long before long before Donald and I were listening to like Nickelback out in the pool and the jacuzzi on the radio and the radio would bring out there with the batteries and what, you know, I loved Nickelback long before I ever started my delusion of believing Jack Crow was in love with me, you know, so I didn't come to 2009 and I was listening to his songs way back when I was, you know, but in regardless, how you remind me, That was the saving grace of living with horrible Donald. The pool and jacuzzi and the townhomes there with that was awesome. Awesome. Um. Oh God, this man. Joe had nothing kind to say about the clock. Joe has nothing kind to say about most modern, modern day music too. Anything you can think of. But anyway, he liked my, he really liked, he's like, you really come into your own poetry with what I wrote. I shared love is nothing with him. Maybe it was the, the awakening that I did the first time, you know. But regardless, my poetry is not like Rose of the Red House of Blue, but even if it was, even if it was that horrible, you're supposed to clap. You're supposed to clap for everybody. That's the rules of the coffee shop, and nobody clapped. When I say nobody, it was like 
the whole room was full. They all clapped for the person who came up before me. I get up there, if I have the courage to do it, to one, I did just my one poem. And we, I got like a few, like, like that. It was awful. It was awful. Especially since I would sit up front and clap for every person, whether they I liked them or not. You can say, well, that's just you, yeah. That's just me sitting up and clapping really hard. But if, I mean, what's so hard about clapping? Why couldn't that room clap? It made me actually think maybe they were jealous. You know, because I can't think of any other reason. That this What's so hard about clapping? You're there at a coffee shop, you're supposed to clap. I don't know. I know Love is Nothing is a decent poem. But if I get up and do carry open, you know, I, I know what claps, I don't care, really. M you know, there were a couple of people that got up there last night and did karaoke, and they, they weren't very good, and, you know, the whole room doesn't fill with applause. But that's, I, I won't care, because... I'd be doing it just for fun. It's not my original fucking stuff. But yeah, I get up there and have the courage to bear my soul. Love is nothing. It's a very personal poem. And no one fucking clapped. When I say no one, it was like spread, like it was a couple claps. It was unbelievable. I was so humiliated. I was humiliated, especially since the whole room was falling right before me. The person right before me, the whole room clapped. The whole room roared with applause, okay? Why can't you clap for me? You know, it's just a polite thing to do. I don't understand. I don't understand. I didn't understand years ago, and I still don't understand why they didn't clap. The whole room was full, they didn't clap. You know how hard it is to get up there and recite in front of a room full of people your original crap? My original poem that's very personal? I write what's called confessional poetry. You know, that's, that's the terminology for it. It's true, and it's very, you know, and it's very, you know, talks about death, and, you know. I have about 20 videos to upload. I took a hiatus from YouTube. And I don't have to apologize for that. Maybe I shouldn't have taken hiatus from my friends, but... You know... I'm going through a lot of shit right now, and it's shit that's like, you know, coming upon me all at once. The thing with the cord. I, I can predict it. I'm going to tell you guys. My mom called and left a message with her lawyer. I can tell you, auntie's going to try to convince me. What is that? You know? The lawyer's never had the courtesy to introduce it to the oh, I think it's so fucking me. Again, I'm not unreasonable. If, if not auntie, if the lawyer treated me with respect and said, you know, Laura, I really feel it would be in your mom's best interest if you stay out of the courtroom. Will you please do this? You know, but no. It's, they think they can just order me around and tell me what to do and treat me as if I don't exist. And so I got that. And now I'm in a conundrum because 
I need to get that form into Social Security and I'm just going to do it without going into therapy. That was Selena's suggestion. The person on the phone told me the longer you wait, the worse it is for you and it's going to look really bad. It looks like you're hiding something. If you have your, if you ha get, if you get your benefits, if they suspend them, they are going to, no matter what, do a full review. Just turn in the form, ma'am. You know, turn in the form. It's, it's, you know, and I explained to her why I hadn't because I feel like I'm going to lose my benefits anyway because I've had no back problems in my primary back. But, so now, you know me, I was crying, crying in that office when she, I, I spent, I spent a lot, I did the bubble thing and they ask you all the questions, you know, they want to do the bubble questionnaire. Um, I'm sure a lot of places do those bubble questionnaires. Especially, remember, I'm on Medicaid or Medi whatever I'm on, Mass Health Medicaid. And, and apparently with my insurance, what she told me, with your insurance, it has, the person talking to you has to, she said something or other, it has to have higher qualifications with your insurance in order for your insurance to pay for it. Or I don't know. We don't have anybody on there you don't want, the one you had before. No, I think it's better if I do something clean. Because... I was calling her and leaving messages and crap that I will not do with my new one at all. Not at all. Um, it's better I make a clean break. It might be better if I don't even go to that place anymore. I don't even go if I find a new place, but I don't know. What a conundrum. I finally do it and I, I brought all my stuff with me. I was going to turn in the and just be able to say, I'm in therapy. And because I didn't do intake, I'm not officially a patient there. So all, I'm, they're going to look at that and they're going to see that I didn't, during this time, I really didn't go to therapy that much. And my bad, I have a bad feeling I'm going to lose my benefits. That's not me being negative, it's me being realistic. And I explained to Selena yesterday on the phone, I'm like, I'm like, my pro... I think I explained this. No, I think I meant to, and then I, I had to hang up. Um, was my taxi was coming. But no, Selena, my pr I think I did maybe told her. I don't know. My primary is not. I did tell Selena. My primary is not psychological. My primary reason I got approved for disability, and shocking to me, and just by the way, was my back problem. That's not good. I didn't even understand that because my back problems have been very sporadic. You know, I don't know why I got approved. It doesn't make sense, really. It should have been for the psychological primary. But I'm just grateful that I got it. we'll get off of that. I've been, th I've been going through a lot, and I just, I know I'm always going through a lot, and I usually don't leave you to, I usually not going through, or I'm going to be chastised by my friends for not turning in that form. No. me like it did when I, remember when I went far away when I was back in the shelter in the summer, last summer, you guys know, it wasn't even officially summer yet, I don't think, regardless, remember, I told you that cost me a lot of money, I went and stayed in a hotel that was, the hotel and that's, in that area was 180 just for the hotel alone, and you know I went out and drank and had to buy drinks and what I mean, it, it was cost me a pretty penny that night. Going to this local place, you know, it's still, a, it's, it's not local, is it? It's not here where my mom lives, unfortunately. In 2009 there was 
In 2009, there was a karaoke bar walking distance. And then I could just take a taxi home for not that much. That's the bar I was going to. I got in trouble in 2009. And that was when my mom was in the hospital. She and I actually went there. I don't know that was it karaoke, I think. Oh gosh, I never had the courage to get up and sing. Um, remember, I hadn't even at that point done karaoke at all. I hadn't even done it at Spotlight Bar. I didn't get the courage, find the courage to do it at Spotlight Bar until after I was broken up with Donald that I would take buses, couple buses. Hollywood, I told you it's probably part night than anybody. And the bus ran all night in LA, but I had to be waiting for buses three or four in the morning. And you, you, you develop a different perspective on life when you take risks all the time with your life. And then, because you think, like, why does, why does it have to be this way? Why couldn't I have just been normal like my cousins have dead on and grown up and just, they all went to college by the way, but, you know, grown up and got married and had kids and, why, why couldn't have been that way for me? And that's the kind of things I would think about as I'm sitting there all by myself at three and four in the morning waiting for buses. By the way, where we live, where we live. And the bus didn't drop me off right in front of the house at 3 and 4 in the morning. I had to walk. Was I afraid? A little bit. I was a little bit afraid. It wasn't Main Street. I had to walk down and I... I was a little bit afraid I would run. I was a little bit afraid. I didn't have a cell phone either. But I had sneakers on and... You know, I took the chance. It was an alleyway that I had to go down where Donald and Hope were lived right there for years. Hope's like, you're crazy. You walk at this middle of the night. And then I would think to myself, yeah. But on other nights, your son makes me walk to another direction down to Vaughn's at one in the morning. So what's the difference, really? This is my life, you know. Of course, Hope thought I was crazy to do that, too. I mean, unless she knows her son would get ugly when I refused to do what he wanted. Particularly if he was afraid he was going to run out of books, you know. He had plenty left, but you never know. It might run out, so you need to send Laura down to Vons to get me at least a 40s of steel reserve, you know, just in case my vodka runs out. couldn't do that when I was his girlfriend. When I was his girlfriend, we'd have to go together. When I was broken up with him and I was there in his school crazy, oh yeah, he can make me do anything he wanted me. Except night he, he wanted me to hug him, wanted scratchies. Huggies, or huggies, I think. He wanted huggies, and I said, no way. You're not getting huggies from me, you fucking prick. You left me possibly dead at the bottom of that hill. I didn't even, wasn't even sorry afterwards. Some people might accidentally hurt someone in a fit of alcoholic rage, but then they're sorry for doing it. no reason for me to not get up and who cares? People get up who suck and they do it and who cares? I mean, I found after a year going there periodically, I found the courage to get up there at Spelly Bar and sing and they were all good. Nobody who got up there at Spelly Bar sucked. Nobody. They were all, they weren't all fantastic, but they were all still far surpassing other karaoke bars I've gone to in Massachusetts where, you know, there were people that get up there that suck. 
and those people actually are bad. And it's kind of a little bit painful to listen to them. But, you know, they want to do it, and... Woman got up there at the end of the night last night, and she did Donna Summer. And, you know, if it, it sounded good, people might have danced, but, you know, no one was going to dance because she was butchering it. No, it just didn't sound good. No. I'm gonna try it. Maybe I'll try doing the rose. I'd always wanted to do the rose. I know I love a lot of songs. I mean, I know them by heart. When you know the song, it's easier. There, some people do karaoke and they, it's a song they don't. You, 